a room in a friend's rented North London house share came up recently. Usually, this would mean an instant queue of prospective tenants waiting for their 10-minute interview slot, followed by an unpleasant few hours of decision-making. This time, my friend reported, whole days passed without anyone getting in touch. We wondered if it might be the first hairline crack in some huge chasm about to rip through life as we know it, if, in the future, we would look back on the empty wasteland of the city and remember that day as the day London turned. The news last week that the number of people leaving the capital has reached a five-year high will come as no surprise to anyone trying to house themselves in the capital. Whatever the political shocks of the last year, some things are unchanged, house prices continue to bear no relation to earnings, private landlords remain largely unregulated and rents continue to eat up two-thirds of the average Londoner's wages. Plus, it's dirty, noisy, overcrowded and the central line on a hot day is enough to make anyone dream of Milton Keynes. If the number of those leaving is increasing, the report says 93,300 people fled this year. London is still growing, overall. And we don't know from figures like these how much is pull, and how much is push, how many are homeowners cashing in on the London property. Bonus, buying something bigger and taking portable careers with them, and how many are wrenching themselves away from families, social networks and jobs that don't exist outside of the capital. If London really is past its peak, it is perhaps good news for the rest of the country. Youngish people, those in their 30s are leaving at a higher rate than other age groups with skills and energy can revitalize regions that have suffered from London's tendency to vacuum up opportunity. If this is an Example of markets being benign and beautiful, leavers, whether they're jumping or being pushed, can create new culture, start businesses, improve schools and, yes, maybe even smarten places up with their demand for better coffee. They can bring with them their experience of living in a global city. Even better, London's greedy landlords will get their comeuppance and discover, as if in a sweet nursery fable, that you really can set the rent so high that people will stop paying it. But, the report lists St. Albans, Dartford and Cambridge as the top destinations for leavers, meaning it's unlikely they'll be doing any of these things, as their jobs will still be in London and they'll be too knackered and poor from the commute.